This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. Up here in the attic. Come it went up. There's nothing to watch. <laughs> Come net. Everything's 3D Hollywood today. I remember back when I was, I was your age, you used to get the old TV set, no satellite hookups or anything, just took our signals out of the air. But wasn't that dangerous? Well, that was, of course, uh, before the uh, Surgeon General found a link between uh, TV signals and cancer. That was before your time. Remember some old 2D shows, though? Uh, some were even in black and white. Wow! Of course, that was uh, before President Turner put that enforced colorization law through in the 20s. My show's been really boring. They weren't even interactive. Uh, don't be so sure about that. There were some great shows back then. Oh, wait a minute. Let me look at this. Mm. Ooh, what? what's that? Oh, it's called CCR. <laughs> Uh, see, back before all the video was put directly into computer memory in the comnet, people used to tape shows. Uh, let me see. Uh, oh, there's, there's a tape already in here. Let me let me hook this up here. Let me see what we got. Uh, oh, ooh, oh, damn radiation! <laughs> Come back with us to the '60s and '70s, the dwelling place of the lost generation. An era whose heroes, role models, and very lives were molded and formed by weekly installments of favorite television programs. Welcome to the place your parents didn't understand. Welcome to the vast wasteland. Welcome, Welcome home. home. Exciting episode of Bass Wasteland. I'm your host, Mark Schmidbar, along with Wilbur Neal and Marty Wiley, and we're here to talk about 60s and 70s television. And tonight we're going to talk about music shows and band shows, so another exciting episode. But before we jump into it, just want to tell you we're on Tuesdays at 6, Wednesdays at 10, and Thursdays at 3 p.m. on ACTV at Cable 21. Also, if you want to write to us, you can write to 215. There you go. And now on to uh, music shows and band shows. Of course, one of the earliest things on television because it was incredibly cheap to do. <laughs> he basically hired some local band to come out, you know, or some local singer and uh, basically stick a mic out there and do a show. And one camera was incredibly cheap. So you saw a lot of it in the, in the, uh, like the late 40s and early 50s and all that. But I didn't see any of it. Well, <laughs> I wasn't born. <laughs> for those who were born then, you saw a lot of that. So, uh, but uh, later when we got into the 60s, they started to get more and more um, complex. Sophisticated. Sophisticated. And Sophisticated so, uh, TV. What, would, uh, what was your first reference? I'm trying, I'm just going through my stuff. Uh, well, I, probably the first recollectable one, I'd say, would be, um, well, American Bandstand kind of came up through the, then it come up through the 50s to, up to the 60s. Right, uh, that? that was on, uh, what, 57 all the way till 87. Exactly. <laughs> and so it was on for like, and it was on for like two more years on like USA or something. 
one of the cable networks. It, and, but and Dick Clark was gone by that point. He pretty much had sold everything. I don't it. know. Dick Clark never seemed to change. He always kind of looked the same there. And his head got a little bigger. His forehead <laughs> did. <laughs> did. I always wonder about Dick Clark. He just kind of stayed the same, you know? I think maybe he's an alien or something. I don't know what the deal is. Well, it's, his father's in the cosmetic, cosmetic business, business is what it is. Secret so. cosmetic. Exactly. Those same strange and secret cosmetic I'm just things. convinced he's going to yeah. be on some show sometime, and they're going to... Just in the middle of some show, and all of the uh, all the tucks and the poles and everything are all going to go at once, and he's going to be like, oh, <laughs> and he's going to instantly turn it like to an 80-year-old man in front of your eyes. Well, so. see, the the lights, oh, the lights are going to be, be turned up so bright, and all the stuff is just going to melt on the stage. Ah, <laughs> taking on old folks. <laughs> Anyways, so but um, yeah, I'd say Bandstand was easily the first recollectable one, and then um, right, you you jump into something like um, although. It would go more in the variety show kind of thing, I'd say, Ed Sullivan, but uh, mm -hmm. that's more of the uh, variety show which kind by, of thing. Variety which, show. by the way, that's what we're doing next show, so uh, we'll, we'll try not to venture too far into the variety show area. Exactly, exactly. We're doing yeah. music shows this music time, show. so um, I guess well, we'll I was kind of running along to alongside of uh, Bandstand with Soul Train. Well, a little later, yeah, but he did get into the Soul <laughs> Train. <laughs> With Don Cornelius, the man with the biggest microphone on TV. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and a beautiful voice. <laughs> Thank you. Very much. Like Don should have done. Maybe he did. Maybe he did some radio or something before he did the whole so. train. You know? So he just had that wonderful speaking voice. Like Don Cornelius reads Shakespeare or something. You know? <laughs> I don't. But anyway. Uh, he did. Uh, he's a wonderful speaking voice. And they did kind of pretty much the same kind of things, you know, on there. Except they had the Soul Train line, line on Soul Train, yeah. where, where Bandstand just had, like, featured dancers or something. Radio record. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, they did a little of that on, um, no, they didn't. No, they didn't. I don't no, remember No, they had the it. scramble board. Right. Yeah. They had to figure it out. Duh, Sometimes duh. it was real hard, like, these things will do with three letters. <laughs> and then, whatever could it be? <laughs> And then, of course, they had the um, cartoons based on the popular bands of the time. Right. How many popular bands? Let's see. The Beatles had a cartoon. Right. Yeah. The Hoffmans had a cartoon? Yes, they did. But yes, that was after did. the Jackson 5 the cartoon. The Jackson, Jackson 5, 5, which you can still catch sometimes on that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they think the Beatles one, like, always cracked me up because... It was like obviously not the Beatles. <laughs> yeah, although it could have been Ringo's voice. Yeah, we could have something else to do. <laughs> oh yeah. Couldn't play the drums here, Ringo. Yeah, do this. Ringo. <laughs> it wasn't Ringo. They never got the whole G out. They wasn't a hard Ringo. G. It was, it was just kind of a softer. Y'all running together, Ringo. <laughs> well, this John Paul George and Ringo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, boy, howdy. And they did a lot of great songs on there. It seemed like they edited down the songs too. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That was that was always fun. Yeah, because already it's already we're already running into the the three minute song thing here because no songs were supposed to go under over three minutes because at that time they just figured it won't sell. If it's over three minutes, this song will not sell. Right. So they put it on the cartoon. It had to be on a 45. Exactly. You had, had to go on a 45. Or and so when trouble. they get it on the cartoon, they got to cut it down that much more. So it's like you cut out half the instrumental stuff and some of the singing too. Sometimes some of them are right in there and they'll be singing and oh, they're back to the scene. Yeah, it's like that. And then it just fades right out. <laughs> it was sad. But hey, that was Saturday morning cartoons. Yeah, but that but that stuff was uh, Shakespeare compared to stuff like uh, <laughs> stuff that came later, some of the Hanna Barbera. Stuff. This is true. <laughs> this is quite true. Trash classic, well, yeah, classic but, stuff. But uh, so some of the like, uh, well, uh, we'll we'll mention the the live action one first, Partridge Family. Yeah. Uh, the the attempt to bring the the family sitcom and the music show together. Well, I, I, I'd often heard that the Partridge family was loosely based on the the uh, the cow the cow family. Yeah. yeah. Who who did have a special, by mm -hmm. the way? There, it was light after they got to be real popular. Who? When was that? But it, <laughs> they got to be a month and a half or so. When they yeah, they popular. they had all that one album and their song <laughs> Indian Lake, and then they also did that cover version of Hair, which was mm -hmm. just real popular. So. Cow Sills were just really out there, and then they had a, a, a special, Buddy Epson star, was guest star on there. Ooh. My God, he got to dance with, little, what's her name, Susie Cow Sill or whatever. Oh, wow. Little Cow Sill. <laughs> little, little baby little Cow, cow Sill. Sills. Yeah, my golly, they were just like a family of them. <laughs> just like a family. They, they were they a were family. The Partridge family was neat, though. But the Partridge family was cool. But they, they had that, that strange disease that seems to hit some shows where uh, 
the youngest the youngest son will disappear and they get somebody else to fill in for him. And nobody <laughs> seems to notice. Nobody, nobody seems to notice. <laughs> yeah. The kid yeah. had dark hair and he turned the plate up, boom, he's got blonde hair. What <laughs> happened there? <laughs> he, had, he, was, he was a little dark haired kid with big eyes and then he was a blonde haired kid that looked like everybody else. What happened there? And then they had little Ricky Siegel on the show too. There for a while. I think that that's a little blonde haired kid. Little, I think okay. Because a little dark haired kid's name is something like Jeremy Gobble Boots or something. <laughs> I'll just look this that's up. real well in the credits. But you know what the the shows like um we don't have it now, so well, maybe it's coming back now with the with the new squids on the block and stuff like that. Um, David Cassidy with the Teen Idol. Yes. And you really don't have that a whole lot anymore like that. The, the, I don't think it's it's a the pre packaged Solely designed to be teen mm -hmm. Well, now what you have is the prepackaged, solely designed to be toys on the market. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Because that's where the new kids are. You can find them in, the, in your toy store. Yeah. I don't look the, for them. I don't look for them, but they're there. <laughs> I try to avoid them. Yeah, I know they're there, though. I make sure I miss them. I know they're there. This scares me. Yeah, here's Jeremy Gelbwax, was the uh, so was Christopher nice Partridge, Gelbwax. and then it became Brian Forst Forst Forster. Brian Forster, Brian Forster, even <laughs> Brian Forster. <laughs> what is this guy? Like like bank bank Jeremy was <laughs> Jeremy was there for one year, and then Brian was there for three years. Well, that's unfair. <laughs> the original guy, boom, you're done. Here's this Ricky Stevens guy you were talking about. Ricky He's there. Siegel. Well, it was played by Ricky Siegel. He, in the story, his name was Ricky Stevens. Yeah, but his real name was Ricky Siegel. So hey. I made my point. Okay. <laughs> well, Reuben, here's Reuben Kincaid. Here's an Alan Kincaid. What happened here? I don't probably remember. Probably after... An uh, Alan Kincaid? <laughs> probably after he died, I assume. They well, Reuben and then the Brady's brother. tried to, like, Reuben copy... Reuben died? Yeah. <laughs> no, say yeah, yeah. so. and, and then, like, the Brady's <coughs> tried to copy by it, trying to put out their own little pathetic... <laughs> Brady sings here. Yeah, uh -huh, there you go. And, and, and well, but it didn't cause, work with the Brady's. Because they were matched up for a long time on uh, ABC. They were, like... Mm -hmm. Paired up a what the eight eight to nine slot I yeah. think something like that. It's like the Brady like the years. Partridge Brady Partridge Brady Partridge. Partridge. <laughs> Just two 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 families with too many kids. That's, that's <laughs> and then <laughs> and then comes this. To, uh, I I don't know what uh, Hannah Hannah Barbera was well, on during the seventies. Some of the concepts they came up with. Mm. It was. Partridge Family, 2200 A.D. We're there in space! <laughs> <laughs> what is the deal with that? I, 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 I just don't know. Plain and simply, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but what I was wish the, they would have said What were the executives thinking? What was the deal? Well, what's, what's the thing? What's, what's popular? What's, what's popular? Space, we've got, space! We've got families. <laughs> we've got family shows. We've got cartoons. <laughs> we've got space. <laughs> and a little animal. We'll put them all together. We'll put them out in space that's and right. give them like a Jetsons car. <laughs> They'll fly around in a big Jetsons kind of bus that's painted like their buses. Buses, yeah. I'm going to kick you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. The relative. So then, this must be a relative of the old TV executive guy. It's a different voice now. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then there were the shows that were like the Banana Splits, which was like Beatles for little kids. Yeah. Well, Beatles and monkeys. Beatles for and kids. monkeys right. for little kids. Because they're banana split. Beatles. I mean, monkeys, bananas. Get. Anyway. Yeah, we really <laughs> connected. <laughs> ah. And then the Too monkeys. Many seven year olds are like. Wow, the deep significance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> really? wow. oh, wow. I contemplated it for days. Cosmic man. <laughs> right. And then these guys came along, and this was like what the only band put together. Just for television. Exactly. Yeah, they, yeah, they wouldn't have got much. together if it wasn't for the show. Right. They were just put together to well, do Well, because show. They, they had the Beatles out here, and you got, like, all these other English pop groups, basically, and there's, there was nothing American, really, that was And so some TV appealing, and so. record company executives got together and said, hey, open auditions. Anybody come in, and we'll, uh, we'll try out. We just want some wacky kids uh, to come in. And didn't... Um, Charles Manson. Charles Manson. Charles Manson tried out. To, he was, could have Where been was, a monkey. No. <laughs> Stephen Stills. I, I it was either Stephen not. Stills or Graham Nash. One of them. One of them was gonna try out, but they told their friend. And their friend Peter. Peter about it, and I think they lent him a guitar. <laughs> so the legend goes, and Peter went on to be. 
a famous monk. Maybe that's another legend. I don't know. The, 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 the Manson tried out. <laughs> no, Manson was connected with the Beach Boys, actually. Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> but the Beach Boys didn't try anything. They just tried to be as popular as they could for however long. But they didn't have a TV show either. This is true. They just had specials, like Bob Hope, <laughs> who still has yeah, specials. Yeah, that's special. <laughs> Isn't that special? <laughs> and then, well, well the cartoons still had quite a few. This this guy here, <laughs> the Archie guy, he um. They they how many everything's how many Archie. cartoons did they have? There was like everything's Archie. There was. Uh, well, there was the sp the spinoff Sabrina and the teenage the teenage witch, which had its own house band. The Groovy Ghoulies. Which later got their own show. Yeah. They well, they all just kind of... I never just, really realized it were different shows. Well, they, they did kind of melt them together. <laughs> it's like they had on Archie for one season, and then they expanded it to like an hour, and they introduced Sabrina, and then Sabrina got her own show, which introduced the Groovy Ghoulies. And but you know, the Archies like had hits. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they were another show, I mean, another group that was put together. They got a group to sing for them. And that group went ahead. No, you mean cartoons can't sing by themselves? <laughs> oh, no. no. Oh, no. 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 But they did. They got a group to sing. And I, I still have not to this day found out who that group is. They haven't seen it. Um, the Archies. Well, yeah, <laughs> but, the mysteries. It's one of those great mysteries of TV. Who were the Archies? You know, who was, was it? The Archie or, band. It was, it was, it could be anybody, by golly. <laughs> but, um. Somebody. And from the Archies, also that's where Josie and the Pussycats came on. Too. Yeah, right. Josie. They they came on. They had a they had a hit or two themselves, I guess. And there's another group. Who who were they? <laughs> Nobody knows. Nobody it's knows. The same group that was doing the Archies. <laughs> uh, they, they they later went on to do Hanna Barbera like, Jim. House Band. Jim, yeah. Gam. <laughs> a Jim show. Pretty much the same show. Uh, which is funny because the the group that sings for Jim and the Holograms is the same group that sings for the Misfits on the show. Oh, well, their songs are this long. I mean, the Archies had real. Bang Shang Lang, yeah. Sugar. Ah, uh, not, not just sugar. Sugar, sugar. Sugar, sugar, honey, honey, all that. Ah, honey, honey. I mean, I remember these from <laughs> the skating You are my candy rink. girl, <laughs> and you got me wanting you. And you could get an Archie record off the back of some cereal. Alphabet. Post. And it was post. Oh, no, post yeah. Off the back of post cereals. Yeah. It was alphabet yeah. and I sugar crisp. You would cut off this record off the back of the cereal box, and you'd put it on your record player, and you'd put a piece of currency on it, you little way <laughs> yeah. down. Or you and just you tape that sucker down to the tape it down player. to the uh, turntable there. Yeah, and make and sure the edges would, don't curl up after you cut it out. There. And you wouldn't know what the record was <coughs> until you played it. You had a choice of four, but you wouldn't know which, which one it was. You always got the same one and you didn't want it and you wanted to get bang shang lang but you always got sugar sugar. sugar. Well, what you did. <laughs> and so what do you do? You end up going to the store and you cut them records <laughs> off the back of there and there's cereal uh, fall out all over the place anyway, so it's just <laughs> Oh, Statue of Limitations is up, I guess, all you want. Yeah, I guess that's up. That's I hope so. Bye, golly. Those <laughs> records and things. Those fun, fun, fun. In the, fun. In the, in the stores with knives, uh-huh. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> today's technology wouldn't let you do the, the miracle of the uh, the record the record on the back of the cereal box. Well, you know, they'd you'd see the CD on the back of the you'd cereal box. You'd probably have a, the <laughs> CD you know? inside the cereal yeah, box. Inside. Cereal box. Yeah. Free CD inside, you know. Of course, the cereal probably costs like $20, <laughs> but hey, you got a free CD in there. Yeah. That'll, what a deal. That'll probably happen here in the next five oh, years. Yeah. I'm looking for it. The new kids fun. on the block cereal, you know, yeah. <laughs> the oh, free CD sure. inside. <laughs> Or wait, new new kids cards with free CDs. Get off the new kids. Well, they're they're like the only people that would probably consent to do something like that unless they're gonna put out like a MC Hammer set of cards. <laughs> <laughs> MC Hammer cereal. Hammer time cereal, you know. <laughs> Come on, buddy, <my> fat. <laughs> it's not breakfast time anymore. It's Hammer time. time. <laughs> but they like got together. I mean, the difference between those is like the monkeys and the were put together. And then the show, show grew, yeah. And I actually still have my monkey's comic book, which I couldn't find. Which I, I don't know how I ever got it. Cost me a whole twelve whole cents, and how I ever got twelve cents together at the age of seven. Who wow. knows? Wow. <laughs> like those, those were those great gold key comics. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. Gold key, who were but, the um, the great people that did all the comics and things for TV shows and uh -huh. movies back then. It was gold key. <laughs> <laughs> well, but. Uh, Interesting thing with the monkeys, though, is the fact that uh, rather quickly they uh, the the members kind of kind of started like 
we're professional musicians, you know, rather than well, we're people who were put together wait by. Wait a minute, there were only two professional musicians. But in they the band. all acted like as the as the show went on, they started having these serious sessions at the end of the show. It was like where obviously they were like, oh, we edited the show, and there's like two minutes. Oh, and we gotta like fill in. Frank Zappa would come on yeah, with Mike Nesbitt, and we all yeah. sit there and talk, you know. <laughs> like, yeah. What yeah. was the deal with that? <laughs> yeah, the Zappa Nes. Well, let's see, Mike was the actual musician, Peter was an actual musician, yeah. Davy Jones was actually a stage actor from from England, mm -hmm. and Mickey Dolenz, of course, was brought up on TV. Yeah. As circus, circus boy. Circus boy. Yes. <laughs> and uh, he learned, I guess he was a guitar player, and they said, no, no, you look like a drummer here. Yeah. And he learned how to play the drums. And, uh, well, of course, they had good writers backing them up on... Sure. <laughs> I mean, who was it? Hart? What was his name? Boyce and Hart? Boyce and Hart, yeah. Boyce and Hart wrote a lot of their tunes. Ned Smith wrote some of them. Right. And, um, Neil somebody Diamond? like uh, Neil, Neil Diamond. Neil Diamond, yeah. Diamond. He and wrote Carol, um, Carol Kane? Mm -hmm. No, not Carol King. King. Carol King. Neil and Diamond King? wrote I'm a Believer. Carol King wrote Pleasant. Did she write Pleasant Valley Sunday? Something. Let's I'm see. Thinking well, you know, yeah. Some of them there, yeah. Carol King and Jerry Goffin wrote Pleasant Valley Sunday. Here in Status I mean, Symbol Stephen Land. Stone. Stepping Stone, Boyce and Hart. Okay. Not just Stepping Stone. Mm -hmm. I think Boyce and Hart pretty much wrote a lot of it. Well, that's because they didn't have their own show. I guess <laughs> yeah. not. The Boyce and Hart Boyce show. and Hart show, yeah. Gone over. Well, know. didn't, didn't, no, that's Jan and Dean. Okay. Yeah. Never mind. One of those two. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think who went around that, that curve there and got messed up. Man, it was Jan okay, and then Dean. Okay, then we got older, and I see you've got, like, the show that we grew up to. Those of us who, who like, grew up on the monkeys and whatnot. Don Kirshner. Don Kirshner's Rack Cancer. Well, before so that was right midnight, midnight Special. special. Was right. The, yeah, but those kind of those kind of grew up together. You yeah, know? it was like uh, Midnight Special was was I don't know it was more fun. Don Kirshner was just Don Kirshner. <laughs> there was there was nobody else there but Don Kirshner, and, and he a, would go around to different <laughs> places and record different groups in action. And but midnight, I'm a weasel record <laughs> producer. <laughs> But I'm laughing all the way Ain't to the bad. bank. Thank you very, very much. much. <laughs> and in Midnight Special, they would have like guest hosts and things. Yeah, that was a lot of, lot of uh, <laughs> Wolfman Jack. Wolfman Jack. Yes. Oh, woo! Yeah. All right, baby, oh, baby, yeah. it's Wolfman Jack. <laughs> <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> that guy has so a gravelyest voice in the in, in, on radio, and now he's doing country. <laughs> and he's on the he's national doing, channel. He's doing do, flashback do, do, do. stuff too, you know. <laughs> well, that, that, could, and remember, that could be his remember, own remember. fault. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too much seventies for Wolfman. Yeah, Wolf that's Man. right. Hey. So, hey. And that was basically the. Yes. What oh, you mean? I like Wolfman. <laughs> oh, okay. Us, I'm not. I I kid because I love. <laughs> he's yeah, a great yeah. guy. I was just gonna say that that was basically the predecessor. Um, when Midnight Special ended, which according to this, oh shoot, where is it? Um, 81. Here. That was basically when Friday Night Videos started. <laughs> Somewhere around there. You know, video, it's not the same. Yeah. Video, even if it's a band, live band video. It's, video. it's still a video. Yeah, it's like when it's cool it's when not, the band is up there on the stage concert, and they can screw you know, up and whatnot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's the, it's the, just imagine, are they going to miss a note? <laughs> no, it's just too polished now. Uh -huh. there's, there's no, there's is no. Is the singer too drunk to go on tonight? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There's no margin for error. It's all, it's all, it's, all it's a now. done deal. I mean, the only thing I think the closest you can come to, to like live music on stage is still when Saturday Night Live has bands. Yeah. And they always had some like real. If only Lauren would, uh, Lauren Michaels would get a better idea as to some of the stuff he picks is like, well, these are interesting. This is well, interesting. They've had odd stuff on. Oh, there, they've had great stuff. <laughs> they've had great stuff, and they've also had some stuff that I think only Lauren might like. <laughs> oh, that's much better. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're going backwards and done, but. <laughs> Let's see, um, well, so we had, uh, oh, uh, Hullabaloo. <laughs> well, Hullabaloo, now, here, there was, Hullabaloo. well, hey, you, if you're going to mention Hullabaloo, you got to mention Shindig, too. There you go, pretty much the same show. It was like, uh, <laughs> woo, we, we were driving around, we are heading south one time, going to uh, somewhere south. And we passed by where they did one of those shows, it was either Hullabaloo or Shindig. It was the old studio, it was like old... Get out and take a picture? No, we just passed. Oh, hey, look! <laughs> <laughs> it was like this old concrete building there, and it said, This was where we did that show. Oh, wow. Wait, no, it was like their big claim to fame. This is like um, 79 or 80, and the show was on only back in the 60s. Yeah. I used to watch Bobby Goldsboro's show. That was kind of a syndicated deal, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. 
There was a lot of syndicated stuff uh, in the 70s. Especially. Well, the Bobby Goldsboro show kind of spun off of the Glenn Campbell show, which kind of spun no. off of the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Glenn Cowbell show. <laughs> which kind of spun off of the part done, the, the Smothers Brothers, Brothers right. show. Well, Bobby Goldsboro show was like a half hour. It was a pretty cool show if you liked country popish music. Which well, yeah, but it did. Growing I'm just up where I grew up, you watched Hee Haw <laughs> and the country kind of shows. <laughs> well, that was kind of all that was really on at that time. I mean, any of the music shows were kind of the. Uh, it kind of got taken over. The, 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 the that, that was that was the height of the whole the, of the, whole the country folky phenomenon. the folky everyone, poppy everyone was, country Everyone was getting their thing. CBs and putting them in their car, and here we go. Oh, what? you're talking Tom T. Hall to Yeah. yeah. There you go. Got us a mighty convoy. We, I, I see uh, <laughs> Nashville on the road, which was on until 83. Ding, 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 Pop ding, goes ding, the ding, country. Ding, 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 ding. So from 74 to 82, we had um, Music Hall America, which was only in 76. Mm. And uh, Of course, the granddaddy of all those country shows I used to be subjected to was the Porter Wagner show. <laughs> what about the Grand <laughs> Ole Dolly Opry? Dolly and her boxes of braids. <laughs> it was like Breeze would alternate. You'd get towels, you'd get glasses. Which one is it going to be? We're going to get towels, we're going to get glasses. glasses. It's a surprise in every box. So we just really don't have <laughs> Once again, <music> okay. <laughs> well now, well see that's the thing. Now we uh, uh, have videos. That's pretty much the planet. I mean you look at these references and almost every single one was right the the ones that lasted the longest basically was right when MTV kicked in. Yeah, right. <laughs> it was like boom, and that's the end of the whole thing. You're done. You don't need any of these shows. We got the MTV, MTV 24 hours a day. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> so then they they decided to come in here with their own Nashville channel. Oh yeah. So then they got the Nashville <laughs> channel and <laughs> by golly, here you go. Watch that's where Wolfman pole. Jack is Watch now. <laughs> Shoot, we know in a way. The monkeys, those kind of shows, kind of gave birth to the video. Oh, sure. Definitely. Oh, sure. Easily, easily. Of course, I mean, the monkeys blatantly ripped off Beatles, but I mean, as far as their style of uh, of uh, videos, but they mm -hmm. didn't call them that then. Yeah. No. They were. I mean, help and uh, songs in music. Well, oh, music, yeah. music, music, and songs in music. Songs in movies. Mm -hmm. Right. Songs on TV shows. With lots of little Benny Hill type bits of running around in fast motion. <laughs> Bouncing people, yeah. running, you know, going cross streets, For things real. like that. Yeah, it was. And then Mike is probably he's considered Mike Nesbitt is considered one of yeah. the pioneers of modern video. Sure. Yeah. If not the pioneer sure. of modern video, it's like him, um, Todd Rundgren, Bowie, uh, Bowie, Bowie um, Frank that. Zappa. Also, I mean, he's even though he wasn't actually in on doing actual videos, he was in on the production of a lot of them. I mean, so mm -hmm. yeah, those are considered the. But Mike, I mean, springing from the monkeys here. So certainly we've we've gotten, now gotten to the point that videos have pretty much permeated the whole the whole medium now. Exactly. I and mean, I think, and that's one of the reasons. And, I, and this is I I don't want to get too much into this because that well because we have one minute for one thing. <laughs> and the other reason is we're going to be doing variety shows next week. I'm going to get into this and how videos have affected variety shows. But anyways, uh, just a couple notes before we're out of here. Um, again, we're on Tuesdays at six, Wednesdays at ten, and Thursdays at three. And uh, just a little note for uh, uh, people who like to watch old TV shows, uh, just wanted to tell you about, uh, this is not an ad, by the way, but the Comedy Channel uh, and HA, which are the two comedy networks now fighting it out. Well, they're not fighting it out anymore because they're now going to be merged into Comedy TV sometime next year. And you can see one of those great, other great bands that was on a show on the Comedy Channel. What? Lance Link <laughs> and the Evolution Revolution! <laughs> Parents, kid. listen to those lyrics. Listen to those lyrics real close. It's Monkey. It's Monkey's playing the band, but listen to those lyrics That's real right. close. That's another group. Who sings these songs? Yeah. We just don't know. So write in and tell us who <laughs> sings these songs. But anyways, I think we're about out of here. So for all of us at Vast Wasteland, we'll see you next time with variety shows. Good night, everybody!